in 2002, a new exhibition, The Genius of Genetics, opened here in the Czech Republic. It was here, in this tiny garden, that Gregor Mendel conducted his famous experiments in genetics. Welcome again. Today we analyze Mendel's genius. Was Gregor Mendel lucky? If so, how and to what extent? Did he falsify his data? Can we ever confirm or deny this accusation? Was he a great scientist? The genius of genetics. Mendel's second law, the law of independent assortment. Its formulation came from his famous cross between pure breeding, round yellow peas, and pure breeding, green wrinkled peas. The first filial generation, or F1, from this cross produced only round and yellow peas. But Mendel had the foresight to self the F1, crossing them with themselves and with others of the same generation. This gave rise to what he termed the F2 generation. And it was here that he got the classic 9331 ratio, where 9 represents the ratio of round and yellow peas, and 3 wrinkled and yellow, and 3 round and green, and just 1 16th of his F2 wrinkled and green. From this data, Mendel was able to reason that the factors now known as the genes for round occurred in pairs with a dominant allele and a recessive allele, and the factors responsible for yellow or green, the color of the peas, that too occurred as a pair with only one of the two alleles being passed on in the sex cell or the gamete. He reasoned that his F1 were all of this mixed makeup. The term that we use today is heterozygous. So with this heterozygous F1, he selfed the peas, crossing them with the same genotype. And he reasoned that the factor for roundness and the factor for yellow color would occur just as frequently as the combination of roundness and green color, or wrinkled and yellow color, or wrinkled and green color. From this reasoning, today we have formulated the Punnett square, and each of these columns represents the occurrence of the four different gametes, with each one occurring with the same likelihood. Four gametes from one plant are laid down across the top of the square, and the corresponding four gametes, which would be the same, because the F1 is being selfed. The F2 genotypes look like this, and these are the phenotypes with nine round and yellow, three round and green, three yellow and wrinkled, and just one wrinkled and green. Mendel crossed thousands of peas, and his ratio did not exactly match this nine, three, three, one which is purely a prediction based on probabilities. But his data was an extremely close match. Since the release and acceptance of his results, 
some statisticians have questioned that given the size of his samples, his results were too good to be true, with statistical tests showing a very close match to the 9331 ratio. Some propose that Mandel, given the state of the scientific community in the 19th century, repeated his experiments until he got a ratio that was a very good match with what he expected in his hypothesis. And others have made the claim that he falsified his data to support his hypothesis. As it turns out, his hypothesis was correct. And it was from this experiment that he was able to formulate the law of independent assortment, which proposes that the gamete, big R, Y, and the gamete, little r, Y, will occur with just as much frequency as the gamete, big R, little y, and little r, big y. This mixing of the dominant and recessive, which did not occur together in the parental generation or the pure breeding plants which produced his F1 is known as recombination and the recombinants occur with just as much frequency as the original combinations or the parental gametes and this formed the basis for the law of independent assortment Mendel's second law how lucky was Mendel to have chosen a pair of alleles that were not located next to each other. Suppose it happened that the allele for shape, whether that shape be round or wrinkled, and the allele for color, yellow or green, suppose they were located very close by on a chromosome, then would the chance of them separating from each other be just as likely as them staying together? Would the recombinants be just as likely? Fortunately, Mendel was not faced with this dilemma, but the geneticist Thomas Hunt Morgan, in working with fruit flies in the early 20th century, was able to discover that sometimes genes can be linked or located very close by on chromosomes. And when this happens, the only chance of them separating and forming recombinants would be if crossing over happened at just the right point in prophase one of meiosis. Such mixing or recombination would be dependent upon a crossover point or a chiasma forming between the two linked genes. And when this happens, the result is genetic recombination. In this case, a recombination by crossing over. Morgan's work with Drosophila, the fruit fly, showed that the likelihood of recombinants occurring is directly related to the distance apart of the linked genes on the chromosome. And if Mendel had chosen to work with linked genes, then his results would have been completely different. Yet despite his good fortune and the accusations of falsifying data, Gregor Mendel was for his reasoning and for his thinking alone. A truly brilliant geneticist and one of the great scientists of all time.